So now that we've set our model up to use specific order arrivals specified by the orders table, and we've connected the arriving entities uh, to the orders table, uh, I want to use a couple of features from that orders table to simplify our modeling. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select our four part types and set the display name to be orders order ID. This way in the trace and in the logs which we're going to look at in a little bit the order ID will show up for each of the corresponding entities. So when we display information about the entity it will go to the orders table and get the information from the order ID. The second thing I'd like to do is set the ship date. Recall that the ship date is a state variable uh, associated with the table and what we want to do is be able to track the actual ship time when an entity leaves the system. So to do that I'm going to go to the ship uh, object and use the state assignment when an entity enters the ship object. We've already done that for one state assignment by decrementing the whip. So what I want to do this time is use my orders ship date and set that to a value of time now. So now when an entity enters the ship object, we'll do two assignments. We'll decrement the whip, and we will set the value of the ship date. So if I run my model, and we'll run it in fast forward mode, and then go back and look at our table orders, now we can see that we have the actual ship date for this instance or this uh, run of the model. And as we expect, our whip entities were never created because recall we had set the um, uh, entities per arrival using the uh, list order status so that we only created entities corresponding to the new um, <coughs> the new orders. Next we'll use one of the features of Simeo Enterprise to set a target um, for our ship date. Recall that we have a release date and we set a due date that we'd like the orders to ship uh, by and so as a performance metric we'd like to compare uh, the ship date to the due date. So one way to do that with Simeo is to add a target. So I'm going to go to the target um, ribbon and add a target and the first target that we're going to have is our ship date target ship date target and it asks what expression I'd like to evaluate. So the expression that I'd like to evaluate is orders ship date and I'd like to compare that to the orders due date. So I'm putting the upper bound on my ship date as the order's due date, saying that an order is on time if it ships before the due date. So next I can set my value classification, which lets me specify the target status. And so if I'm within the bounds, we're going to say that the job is on time. If it's below the lower bound, or it's also on time. And finally, if it's above the upper bound, we're going to say that the job is late. So I created a target, and I set the target expression value equal to the ship date, and then I set the upper bound for that target to be the due date for that, um, uh, for that entity. And so now if I go back to the facility view and reset my model and run, we can look back and you can see that we have now filled in the status for the corresponding target. So order one is on time, Order 2 is late because the ship date is after the due date. Uh, order 3 is on time and so forth. The next thing that we'll tackle in our model is the four WIP orders. Recall WIP stands for work in process and we said that we have, when we look at our orders table, we have the 15 new orders with the corresponding release date and due date and we also have these four what we call work in process. And so what that means is these orders are in the system when it starts on September 24th at 7 a.m. So when we start our scheduling process, those orders already exist in the system. So we're going to do this in two phases. The first thing that we're going to do is define the WIP. 
So where is the particular job in the process? So we're going to do that using a special or a new table called the work in process table. Stop the run here. Define my work in process. And the first thing we're going to do is connect this to our part order table. So we're going to set a table reference for order ID. Make that capital to be consistent. And the table key that we will use is the orders order ID. And so that links our work in process table to our orders table. The next thing that we need to do is we need to define where the work in process is, where each individual item is in its part routing. So we're going to define that using current step. So I'm going to set an integer and call it current step. And the current step is going to relate back to the part type table, um, the part, sorry, the part routing table to specify where in the process the uh, part is uh, at the start of the run. And finally, now that we have the current step defined, so for example, I might be in step three for part type A, which is the shape process, I need to define where within the process time um, the order is. So if the order takes on average four hours, I might be halfway through or three quarters of the way through uh, with that order when I start the scheduling process. So I will do that with a real property that we will call fraction remaining which will specify the fraction of time that remains to be done uh, when the order process it, when the order uh, when the schedule starts. And so as we did with the orders table, uh, I've created the work in process work in progress table uh, as a separate wor worksheet within our workbook. And so we will bind the work in progress table to that same workbook, but the work in process sheet. So I go to orders. And this time I will bind it to the work in progress table, go to my binding option so that I can manually import the data, and import. And now you can see that for our four orders, uh, WIP orders, WIP 1, WIP 2, WIP 3, and WIP 4, uh, I have the, current, the corresponding current step and fraction remaining. So for example, WIP order 3 is at the third step in the process and it's 33% uh, has 33% has of the work remaining. So if I go back to my orders table, WIP order 3 is part type B. So I can go to part routing and part type B, the third step is the finish step and the average time is 2.4 hours, and so I have roughly one-third of that remaining to be processed. So now that I have the uh, work in process defined, the second step is to actually create the entities corresponding to these work in process orders. And so what I need to do is when the simulation starts, I need to create the four entities corresponding to these orders. I need to put each one of them at its current step in the process, and I need to incorporate this idea of the fraction remaining in the processing time for that, um, uh, for that operation. And my strategy for doing that will be to use an add-on process so that when the run is initialized, I search the work in process table for each row, and then I create the corresponding entity um, at that time. So I'm going to go to my processes uh, ribbon and select process, and I want to use on run initialized. The first thing I'm going to do is search and the search feature, I'm going to uh, search for table rows. So I want table rows. And of course the table I want to search is the work in process table. And the next thing I need to do is go to my search limit and say I want all of them. So I will change the value for the limit to all entities in the table. So when the run is initialized, uh, the search process will search the work in process table and get all of the entities. And for each entity that it finds in the table, or for each table row, I want to create a, uh, an entity. And so I'm going to create a new object, 
and the part instance that I want to do is defined in the part type table. Since the work in process table is connected to the order table and the order table is connected to the part type table, we have direct access to the part type through that table relationship. So now that the entity has been created and it's linked to the part type table and the part type table is linked to the part routing table, I want to specify where in this table uh, the entity is corresponding to the current step. So I'm going to go to the all steps set row and I want to set the row in the part routing table based on the orders work, um, work in process current step. And so what this does is it sets the row in the part routing table based on the current step column in the work in process table. So to support the fraction remaining, the first thing I need to do is have a placeholder. So I'm going to go back to my model entity and define a real value property called fraction remaining. This is a state, sorry, not a property. And I'm going to then give that value a default of 1 rather than 0. So the fraction remaining will always be 1 unless I otherwise set it. So I go back to my model and now I can use the assign step to assign that value model entity fraction remaining based on work in process work in process work in process fraction remaining and so I set the value for the entity state based on the table. The final step is to transfer the entity. So I get the um, transfer no, uh, transfer step. Of course, I created a new entity, and so it exists in free space. And I will transfer it to the part routing sequences. So I create an entity. It's linked to the part type table. I then set the row in the part routing table. I assign the value for fraction, re, uh, the value of fraction remaining, and then I transfer that entity uh, to the correct place using the part routing table. So now when the simulation initializes, I grab everything out of the work in process table and route it to its uh, current step. And now I need to incorporate that fraction remaining. So for the work in process, for example, they might go to the weld station and have 30% of the work remaining. So I'm going to select my stations using multi-select, stop my run here, and go to the process time and simply multiply this by model entity fraction remaining. And so that's why we originally set the default value for fraction remaining to 1. So for our new parts, they'll have the fraction remaining set to 1. And for our whip parts, they'll be assigned through the assign step from the whip table. And so the fraction remaining uh, will be used to uh, determine the processing time. The final step that we need to do is not perform setup. Uh, if the part is being, has already been processed. So if we're halfway through the processing, we won't need to do a setup. So I'm going to use the math if and use model entity fraction remaining. And if this value is 1, meaning we haven't started, I'll use the setup time as we did before. Otherwise, I'll use a value of 0. And so again, what this tells me is that if the fraction remaining, if the fraction remaining is one, it's a new part, then I uh, use the current setup time, otherwise I use a value of zero. So if we now run our model, we can see that the first four parts are created at time zero. And if we fast forward, go back and look, we can see now that the uh, whip orders do in fact have the target ship date. Oops, got to go back in our target ship date. Uh, these are real value and set that to be date time so that we can actually read the, uh, the shipping date. And so now we can see that our whip orders uh, are all on time.